So let's get into this, shall we? I'm ready just as much as everyone else to have my brain racked by all this. Psychopaths like before, right? Potato is afraid of the sun. Potato would be afraid of the sun. It's a potato. What do you expect? All right. So, <clears throat> welcome to another Patch Notes review. Now, if you have never been here before, and you've never seen how terrible my camera appears to be acting right now, what are you stuck on, you piece of shit? Is that better? Yeah, that should, that should hold it, right? I don't even know what my camera's doing right now, chat. It's just having a fucking fit. It appears to be stuck on something, and I can't be asked getting up to check what. That looks right. 9.1 PTR came out for her. Yeah, and there's not a single change for anyone that wears mail. What a fucking surprise. Oh, like Dix, how you doing? Alright, so yeah, for those who are not aware, I do... Help me step camera, I'm stuck. You're banned. Get out. Uh, I'm alright. Overworked, underappreciated, the usual issues. Alright, so for those who are unaware, I do these patch notes without any prior knowledge, meaning you will see my reactions for the first time, hear my reactions for the first time, if you've ever seen the VODs before. Where's Lita so we can get triggered over item balance together? I don't know. Can't be far. Surely can't be far. And, yeah. We're going to have a damn good time. What the hell is that emote supposed to be? You are a leader. There's a you are a leader and I am your leader. Oh, dear. It's an interesting, uh, interesting uh, segue. But, yeah. Happy Diva in a mask. Is it Diva or is it May? Or Akali. I can't tell for sure anymore. Anyway. So yeah. I'm going to read these patch notes off. And I'm going to give my very first impressions on what to expect. And give the usual winners and losers by the end of this. Alright, I have internal stats for Zinza if you're interested. Sure. Have they got the internal stats on when I'm going to be a league partner yet? Fucking bitches. Anyway. I'm sorry, there are mid-patch updates already? What? What? I'm confused. Are you telling me there have already been bugs and the patch has only been out for like, what, an hour? Is it probably from last patch? Probably. I don't know. Maybe... I can't be sure anymore. <laughs> I think those are the previous patches I've Is this already live in EUW as well? I don't know. This is an NA page, so it leads me to believe that it's out in NA. Is the update live or not, chat? It is not out in NA. Well, my surprise goes out the window then, doesn't it? Then again, testing it on the old patch might be a good idea. I don't know. We'll find out. That would be tomorrow. So you're telling me OS always gets it on the day? That's so confusing. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Patch notes usually published like 12 hours before the server update. Makes even less sense for me, though. Because, <laughs> like I said, on League, we just get it in the mornings. But, yeah. <sighs> anyway, 11.8. Gwen's out. Gwen ability rundown. Let's have a quick peek. I'm curious. Bonus on it, magic damage. An arcing skill shot. If they can't target her, why does that go through the thing? You know what? I'm not even going to ask. This is the increased damage stuff, yep. Nine applications of thousand cuts to an enemy. So you basically just build on hit and tanky and you just cut people up. All right. Let's see how it works. No worries. The teaser didn't help shit, by the way, for anyone that remembers it. 
I mean, you, you're trying broken, but it doesn't seem to be working. It's not super arcing. W, Super Shen W, nothing works in there. No way, nothing works outside of it. It doesn't seem to work towards it, no. Don't chance usually get released the Friday of the patch. Yeah, it's coming out later this week, April the 15th. So, technically, well, Friday for me, Thursday for you. But, yeah. <laughs> Just broken really is broken now. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's get into it. So, Annie, W cost increased early. What? Has anyone even seen Annie in a game lately? Lately, Annie's been blazing down her foes by increasing the cost on her W. She'll have to be more careful when deciding whether to burn up minions or enemy champions. I mean, I know Annie exists to annoy people in lane, but... Okay. I thought Auto and what and I had a thing. What did you do? Absolutely nothing. That's the funny part. I like to let these love stories take their course, but unfortunately, it seems like the Auto Mod's not interested in you anymore. They saw Jensen play, and they're like, "You can't do that." Unfortunate, really. But yeah, this is a really strange way to go about it. I mean, pardon me. The problem with uh. <sighs> Oh dear. The problem with uh, like increasing mana cost on a laning character has just always been awful. It's always been such a strange thing. Full course, quick thing. Aside from like plaguing my brain cells with the birthmas number one cheekiness that you do, where the hell was the VOD that you promised me? I got burnt out. Rip. <laughs> but it will come. It'll have to be on 11.8 now. But every time I see this, this number one shit walking around, I get nervous. Wondering when the next one is going to strike. You sent full course to Canada. Why the hell would you send full course to Canada? One man can only have so much maple syrup. Anyway. I don't know if Fulcos likes maple syrup. He loves me. He loves syrup. Okay. Well, there you go. Still, one man can only have so much. Rec, wait for my RuneScape rods coming soon. All right. Noted. But yeah, 20 mana is understandable. For a, but for a character that literally like only lives for lane phase and kind of gets a bit boring and obvious from there onwards, that's odd to me. It's really strange to me. Anyway. Aphelios. Passively th Oh, no. Oh, no. Passively Thality increased, our main weapon effects strengthened. Oh dear. I feel like I've been looking pale ever since we nerfed his interaction with Kraken Slayer in 11.2. Given how he's fallen behind other scaling marks, when we're putting more punch into his lethality rank ups, which have been historically lackluster. And this is true. Like, every single thing about, like, Aphelios being able to do anything with armor pen has always sucked. It has always sucked. It's never going to get better for some reason. Now it might, but that only depends on the items. His first boss was 11 months after release. To be fair, he was broken on release, right? <clears throat> but the funny thing is, even though he's actually at his weakest now and has got like the crappiest win rate of ADCs in solo queue, he still played in pro play. Just purely because the actual damage output that he gets is really good if you have people playing around you. So, yes, we have buffs here. So, yeah, along with his weapon effects during his ultimate to let him reach for the moon. So, passive, the Hitman and the Seer, they up the lethality gain over time to 21 at the end. So, how much gain per? 0 0.51, 1.5, okay, so it's just a, it's just a linear scale. Alright. His three item spike is arse melting. Why did I read that? <clears throat> but yeah, so, now... I don't know if there are any uh, lethality item changes in this thing, but if I do see a, a Dustblade of Felios this patch, I'm not going to be surprised. Just purely because I can't imagine that going well alongside Chakrams, but damn. Honestly, no, I don't think it'll ever happen. I think the fact that it exists to, melt, to literally melt carries is okay, but I don't know if it'll ever get to that point where it's worth leveling it earlier. I don't think it will be. I want to see a triple mark combo with Dustblade. Fucking yikes. But yeah, the Calibrium damage buff, not enough. It's not enough to ever like consider like the synergy with um with lethality. I don't think. 
I mean, the minor buffs towards everything across the board are pretty nice. The the chakra and reef on the calibrium damage per mark and the gravitum root change are all really nice. I can only imagine them being like useful to to some extent, but even then, gravitum root it's point one of a second. It's not huge. Mel, oh, so they got trick. You've definitely activated the full course. Yes, you have. These are now new names that Full Course will try to put into existence. Damn it all. Damn it all. So instead of game where we pick rise at 45% win rate, so I'll stop playing to avoid till so this day stay up. Blech. Blech. I actually have a new name. No, no, not again. This is why I don't do fucking vod uh, patch notes on stream. The first PTR Ray boss is so stupid. Really? Be good if I could access the PTR. Smart. Come get some! Give me a heart attack for a second there, Rogers. Thought you and the I thought you and the lady were gonna have a <laughs> gonna have a child. <laughs> Fuck <Fucking hell. laughs> Thank you for the nine months, Rogers. You fucking bitch. <sighs> You'll see it on the board. No worries, of course. Thank you, Rogers, for the nine months. But you suck, and I hate you. <laughs> Hope you well, dude. Stop, stop like the hate on. But yeah, this is why doing patch notes on stream is a bad idea, because you're all very distracting and horrible. Measures anima powers in the raid. Eh, it means nothing. Won't do shit. Don't ever read the descriptions and expect it to make sense. You're distracting? Why, thank you. Gravitum and Venom all changes look good. I would say, this is kind of the thing though, like across the board, these don't seem like a lot, but when you start like synergizing them together, it's the only thing that's going to make it worthwhile, but it's just such an awkward thing to read off the bat until you actually see it in pro in process. But yeah, the lethality change is something you can make use of. Agonizing how, how little I understand of making a kernel module. Uh, yeah, can't help you with that. Sorry, bud. Cassiopeia. Ecos now scales down. Oh boy. Cass has been coiled up tight with Tear of the Goddess, so she relies on this man and have been like a T flight to dependent who's closer to suffering both power and freedom to item diversity, so we're scaling down her need for it. Won't change. You just get more casts out of it. Alright, Rex Subathon beat low. We fuck off, man. I don't have that kind of energy. It'd just be me sleeping on stream the entire time. Literally. I'd be sleeping on stream for 90% of it. Still forced to buy the worst AP item. I can't see this changing for Cassiopeia, honestly. Bonus rolls are returning a 9.1. Fuck off, man. Really? I kind of didn't mind that they weren't there, but all that mental gymnastics over whether or not you're going to get the shit is just fucking painful. I hate it. Have Rock, Rogers and Plock the takeovers. I'm not sure any of you could actually handle this. <laughs> But yeah, I don't think it's going to change for Cassiopeia at all. I really don't. I really, really don't. Every time I look at it, I think, yeah, it could work out for that. But th then you just look at how crappy like the tier item line is and you're like, eh, not great. <clears throat> the fact that Ceres doesn't give a shield anymore, that's one of the reasons. But the fact that the scaling isn't particularly great, despite the fact that they toned down the amount needed in half, it doesn't actually seem like it gives as much. For a short range carry that somewhat needed to be like in the middle of a fight to get the most shit done, you don't really get a lot from that. If your if her damage was primarily based off of her Q, it wouldn't be an issue because then she could just poke and run and poke and run. But you need more of the damage to come off her E, and that just does not fucking bode well for you. Captain, I want you to know, I did read the patch notes this morning. And the Warlock PvP change is mint. Love it. <clears throat> because I don't want to get slowed permanently by a fucking Warlock ever again. Anyway. Mundo. Passive max health regen increase. Really? Like, just in general? At present, jungle Mundo has been smashing and top lane Mundo has been cr <sighs> Also a reminder that with S11 Riders promised a tank tier item for Tarek and the like, but it proved hard and they were like, no, nope, can't be bothered. Yeah, that seems to be the going rate for a lot of things Riot-related this tier. 
this year rather. <clears throat> Tackling this by pulling back on his clear speeds, we should roll at his slow as roll without stopping our purple friend from cleaving through the jungle. And we're then doctoring up Lando by tossing him more regen and making him a meaty meatball of his dreams. So, max health regeneration up by 1%. Cap damage versus monsters is. Oh man, they gutted it early game. Dear lord. I mean, level 1 clear won't be horrible, but yeah. At least the health cost restore on enemy hit kind of makes life much easier. You just sustain better by default and can farm with cleave better by default. But this was kind of the reason you'd nerf Mundo in the first place. It's like, oh, he has too much fucking regen and he farms safely with a cleaver on two second cooldown at range. Better nerf the fucking health back and now they just reverted it. So Mundo is useful again. Great. Flat bonus AD. Minus 10 across the board. Max bonus AD. Minus 10 across the board. Again, still a large... Still a large enough buff that you wouldn't really care for it. But yeah, the health cost restore on enemy hits the huge one. For both jungle and lane. It just makes it good. You could honestly take the cap damage loss on the chin. And still, and still play jungle mundo. Just purely because of the sustain change letting you kite better. But yeah. No more jungle Monday where he power finds for 20 minutes, it becomes invincible. Yeah, not sure about that one, Chief. I think that's still there. But yeah. You will 100% still have to outgank a Mundo or kill him early just to get that happening. But yeah. I think lane Mundo definitely has a, like the possibility now, only because of this change. This was like the biggest thing they had to change. And now that that's been reverted, it's uh, yeah definitely useful to farm at ranges Mundo now on a, on a weak side lane. Can't say why not. Can't see why not. Downside, probably still going to get neutered by every Grievous Wounds item in the game because they're kind of a necessity now. So, yeah, can't see that working great for him. But, I mean, Spirit Visage alongside the amount of healing that exists is always nice. But, what you going to do? Then again, if there's actually a universe where you can run... Phase rush on Mundo, it would be hilarious, but I don't think it's worth it. It's not like Udyr where you can just like run around the same way because you don't actually get enough out of it. So as much as a speedy Mundo would be hilarious, it's not enough. But yeah, it's uh, it's a tough, it's a tough slog. But at the very least, with this being taken away, you can 100% now play lane Mundo without feeling the without feeling the burn. <clears throat> nah, bonus move speed increased, uh, decreased off W. I don't know what the hell this means, but yeah. Bonus movement speed instead of 30, 45, 60, 75 is 20, 40, 60, 80, decaying over three seconds based on the R rank. Yeah, I'd say that's worthwhile. The problem is purely because mine has been doing amazing solo queue, so I don't get why he's getting buffed because. That depends where on solo queue you're looking at. Shabanova is the noise Nara occasionally makes. Who listens to that? The grammar errors in the patch notes are horrible. What the fuck? Yeah, look, you get used to that. But yeah, the problem with Nara is, <clears throat> and I talked about this a lot, right? Everyone hates laning into Nara just because he has too much movement and too much, like, freedom. For the, like, for the fact that he does both ranged and melee in lane and has great engage and solid damage, right? The main thing that you used to counter this with was bruises could just build, uh, well, it was Tarby. It's Tarby. It would go Doran's shield, then Tarby, and you would basically mitigate the majority of his hyper damage in lane whilst being able to chase him down in mini form and kick his ass. That was always the best thing about it. But the problem is, now that Stridebreaker exists... And now that, like, there's a lot more that Nar can work with map-wise, it's actually way too hard to make this, uh, to make this work without jungle help. So, this automatically makes Nar the most annoying character in existence. Just for that. Now, don't get me wrong. You still have to be a fucking amazing Nar to actually make the best of- What the hell are you doing in my chat? To make the best of everything that's going on. But- yeah, compared to before, where you could just run him down as someone like Darius, it becomes infinitely harder to just to make 
good with this way. Because hmm. no other bruiser that you would take as a counter to Nar actually has as good of a scaling. And we'll just get completely rubbed off the map later on. That's kind of always been the issue. Like, people just run, like, Jace into Nar, right? And the problem is, like, Jace will just get flat in late game if he engages. But Nar's a tank, so he can actually do the same thing. That's where the shit, like, starts getting a bit awkward later on. But yes, that is the tough times. How do you survive a Nar lane? You have to make sure you get Stride Breaker first. I mean, honestly, like I said... Doran Shield and and Plated Steel Caps, or Tabi as it was, were okay for this. And you were able to do it. In solo queue, you could just pick a bruiser that's capable of doing so. And nine times out of ten, you will come out in a relatively good spot, provided you, you know, you actually dodge the boomerang and then run him down when he's trying to catch it. That's the easy part. Hello, damn girl TF. I haven't got to the Rockabelt changes yet. I'm still getting... I'm still going down the list. You just have to give me a sec. <clears throat> but yeah. I think... I think, like, in a solo queue setting, like, being able to run down now makes things a lot easier. But yeah, pro play, you'll never get this to happen until you nerf Nars base damage. Solo queue is a top lane bruiser. You need to get a good leader. Nars is just so good at not dying. Right? That's kind of the point. Yeah, like... It's even easier to not die now because of Stride Breaker. And you will never get to a point where you out where you outscale enough to the point of saying, okay, I am like feasible in late game and I am like able to do things. You'll either just stomp over the top of them skill like as in a skill matchup, or you'll just be outscaled. That's just not cool. So yeah, not good things for now there. <clears throat> I still don't get how it's balanced that Mundo can deal 140 damage per auto at level 3. Well, see, the good news is that outside of that, he is absolutely piss weak auto-wise. The main thing that you have to understand is that all of Mundo's abilities cost health. So if you're in any way, shape, or form able to poke him down prior to him trying to do that, you will win. Almost always. The problem now is that in that situation, he can now safely farm at range with Q again, which means you will now actually have to deal with him being able to freely farm at range, and face taking those cleavers is not the way because it still does damage, and that's where it gets prob problematic. But yeah, LeBlanc, Q damage and total damage increased. Fuck. Why are we buffing LeBlanc? I really hate this character. <laughs> this is my own personal hate. I don't like this character at all. Assassin with too much mobility and the... I'm still mad that they reverted her passive, dude. But yeah. 10 damage across the board on her base damage and then 20 damage across the board on total damage, including the explosion. 330 damage just to pop the mark. That's crazy. Honestly, if you're... Any any half decent at popping this like particular emblem and just getting the base combo down, there's no issues here. You just 100% just win a trade, provided you don't walk straight into a stun. You will always win. Still going to be in the gutter because of the items. See, that's probably the only thing I'm somewhat happy about, is that AP assassin items are just straight doo-doo, which is probably the greatest thing ever, because I really don't want to see LeBlanc. <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it. I really hate to say it, but like I hate this character. I, per, I, have a, I have a big personal hate for this character because an assassin shouldn't have this much mobility. It was okay. I'm okay with like Zed, Talon, etc. But every time I look at LeBlanc having two and a half dashes and the passive, it pisses me off. Every time. Meanwhile, LeBlanc and Aram smile. But yeah. The, the base damage change is a buff that you can use generally. You'll be great in a one-on-one -on -one situation lane-wise. However, once the once you start realizing that the rest of the game has to exist and you have to do everything with your items and do more from this, LeBlanc starts having a lot of trouble. And that's really saddening. But I personally don't care because fuck LeBlanc. <laughs> That's the thing, like, you, you kind of need LeBlanc to be alright in the game so that you so that you don't get too complacent. But, again, I don't miss the times when, like, Faker had, like, what, a 19-0 
like win rate on LeBlanc to a point where a professional team had to build an entire team comp around countering one character just to beat it. That I will never stand for. I will never, ever, 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 ever stand for that shit. Ever. 20 more damage, like, like I said, it, it's only fine if you do like a 1v1 build and you will like completely like run it over one by one and there's no issues. But yeah, from there, it's never going to be any better. That's kind of the issue. Once you get past that point, you are still stuck for wave clear because you can't do it very well unless you max W and you're still stuck for doing more than more damage to more than one character because you just suffer as LeBlanc. That's pretty much it. Why is there a fucking meat grinder outside my apartment at 8am? Are you fucking kidding me? Man, who lets these people live? Oh. Anyway. Least in E cooldown decreased. Second chain rocket some juicy buffs over the patches I asked. Yeah, but that's it's the problem is it's not enough to actually warrant leveling it. Sorry, I'm grinding solo queue outside. Can you do it quieter, please, so I don't have to fucking shoot you? <clears throat> anyway, Lee Sin. We're giving Lee Sin more clear to help him keep an eye on other top junglers. So Tempest cooldown down by two seconds. Okay. A buff for Lee Sin top lane. I mean, yeah, but nah. <laughs> and I mean, but nah in, in like every entendre of the word possible. As in, yeah, but nah. <laughs> Get it? But yeah, every single thing is, uh, every, that problem with Lee Sin right now is that almost every other jungler just makes Lee's life fucking difficult. Udyr out tanks him. Hecarim out everything's him. Uh, Tank junglers are still useful in comparison. Leeson is just that skill up kind of guy. You just kind of need it. My mid laner locked in Seraphine. Fucking rip. Uh. But seriously, how many times can you actually whip a snipper one fucking edge of the of the road? Come on, man. Hecarim has an insect on a 20 second cooldown. Yeah, pretty much. If we want a buff, they could give him a boost in early game tankiness. I don't even think that's a good idea. Giving an early game jungler more self-sustain will just make it impossible to fucking do anything early game against him. And we kind of want to lean away from that meta a little bit. Almost have enough for the license be worn. Should I up the cost again then? Might up the cost again. Someone someone remind me at the end of the stream I gotta up the cost again just to screw with Rogers. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> Ariana, E bonus resistances decrease. Ooh, here you go. This is an interesting one. Lady of Clockwork has become the staple mid lane mage in pro play, which, again, always was going to happen. 10 million points is not attainable ever. I don't know. Rogers thinks he's near it, and I don't know how many points he has, so I will find out sooner or later. But yeah. Armed um, with both safe early game landing and strong to mid to late game team fight power, she's a reliable source of utility and damage without much of a trade-off. And this has always been the problem with Oriana, really. Really, when you think about it. But yeah, the problem is that Oriana will always be this really safe character that can do this. It's really hard to, like... It's really hard to warrant any sort of changes to Oriana because you automatically know that with enough safe gameplay and if her scaling remains the same, she'll always be good in team fights later on. So the problem is that how do you deal with her in lane generally when you want to go in for a trait? And the problem was always if she had command protect up, you'd take damage by default and you'd be out traded. Even though her base armor and MI is actually fucking dog shit, you are still going to like suffer in the long haul. It's like 40,000 hours of watching that. Truth be told, a lot of you don't watch me enough. So making the impossible goals more impossible seems like a fun idea. 
Can't Hacker Him just remove her from the game, though? Yeah, but then you just ban Hacker Him and then nothing matters. But we're talking purely about lanes, like, as it is. The problem is, like, when you're dealing with Orianna in lane, on, a, like, any sort of level, no, almost no one can trade her to the point of death unless you play an Assassin in lane. And even then, you play an Assassin in lane, jungler just plays around it, you lose. So, that's kind of, like, just how much of, like, a... Not so much a beatdown, but just how much of a gripe it is playing against Oriana. It's always been, like, troublesome. Her poke has always been potent. But... People complain about champions and then select none in... But, yeah, that's always the strangest thing. I've never understood that. Like, no, I just, just got to get my uh, my numbers in, you know. I got to gotta, gotta learn against every character. And then they play against that character and they just fucking throw. <laughs> they just throw shit out the window like, Nah, man! Can't fucking deal with it, man! Not cool! I'm here for a high percentage. There's no way he's anywhere near 10 mil. <laughs> Guess we'll find out, Sent. Find out. But yeah, this is a necessity, this particular change, but it ends up being the same later on. It's just that, yeah, in the very early stages of the game, like, you don't get the free 10 off by default, which against her really crappy base resistances is, like, the biggest offset to that ever. But yeah, it still ends up being the same at level at level 5, so yeah. Thanks for following me, this. Captain, you mind not spoiling this shit? Need to change none to random? Yeah, that'll work. Thank you, damn girls here for following. <clears throat> ah, the Ramus update. Here we go. 83.4 thousand hours BDW. It's not enough for car X. I should just buy, I should make it higher, huh? Now that you mention it, it should be at least 100,000 hours. At least. People who don't ban should offer their ban to other roles. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Alright. Ramus. Q base damage decreased later. W now lasts longer with basic attacks. E taunt duration decreased. Decreased? R updated so that Ramus now soars, slams, and slows, and sh- What? What? In conjunction with his release in Wild Rift, we're celebrating Ramus with a mini visual update, along with a new visual and sound effects, was armoring this di I read that so wrong for a second. Want a cinnamon bun? No, I want money is what I want. I want fucking money. That's all I want. I don't want cinnamon buns. I don't want your, like, I don't want your commiserations. I just want money. All of you. Anyway. Also, real talk, I don't even think cinnamon buns are that nice. They look nice, but they don't taste great. Anyway. In conjunction, yeah, so let's see what we got. Powerball. Base damage nerfed. Later. Okay. Not a huge issue. W defensive ball call. A basic attacks now extend the duration of ball call by 0.4 seconds up to a maximum up to a maximum of four additional seconds. How much attack speed would you need to get that going at a, at a steady pace? I still feel like you'd still be maxing taunt. Now let's see what the uh so, they've changed his ultimate to Soaring Slam. Ramus leaps into the air and slams... What? <laughs> Hang on a second. Slams down, dealing 100 at 175, 250, plus 0.6 AP. Magic damage and slowing enemies for up to 20% for 1.5 seconds. Ramus generates aftershocks at the target location for 4 seconds. <laughs> Dealing magic damage and stacking the initial slow up to four times. What? Damage near the center is increased by up to 150 damage based on the distance tra- What? If Soaring Slam is cast while Ramus is in Power Ball, enemies near the center are also knocked up and dealt fire Power Ball's killer- What?
Thank you, Vanderil, for making these videos. It's a little sad that he doesn't get very far. I half expected him to go further, really. Uh. <laughs> See, I was wondering if you could actually break it on max range because it's not used to it. I thought so. Oh, dear. But yeah. Fucking... Dude, what the hell? Real shit? This is hilarious. Better Warwick ulti. Um, honestly, you'd need quite a bit of speed to actually get this at range, but, man, I can totally understand why they, why they nerfed the base damage. You actually... <laughs> you see, you can actually do, like, near on 300 damage to someone if you level Powerball first and just go... F That's insane! There's a reason this is a two-minute cooldown, chat. Like, what? You can do, like, 300 damage on its first level. It's fucking nuts! <laughs> I'm actually almost scared of Ramus now. Well done, right? You've made me scared of Ramus. Never thought that was possible, but they've done it. They've actually made it possible to be scared of Ramus. Dear Lord, I got to be honest with you though. I'm willing to believe a hundred. I'm willing to bet even a hundred dollars that the Riot devs watched Monster Hunter Rise Evolved on and thought, "Hmm, we can totally make Ramus do that." And here we are. And here we are. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Like, Captain, it does like 300 damage at level one if you purely like level um, Powerball first. That's insanity. I can guarantee you that's exactly what... Dude, there's no fucking way around it. Yeah, for those who missed it, right? If Soaring Slam is cast while Ramus is in Powerball, enemies near the center are also knocked up and dealt the Powerball collision damage, ending the Powerball effect. You are literally doing the whole nine yards with this shit. It's great. Still waiting for Aesol to lose his auto attacks. Akarix, if that ever happens, God help us. God help us. We will have literally hit the wall with the stupidest shit ever. Oh. Alright. Rumble. Base magic resistance and magic resist growth decrease. Passive overheating bonus damage. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hang on. Target. Wait. So the overheating bonus damage is decreased, but it scales with the target's maximum health. Now grants attack speed. E now reduces the target's magic. Will. Whoa. Okay, bud. Hang on a second. Although mid-rumble's been doing well, it's, he's been feeling rather tepid up in top lane. We like supporting both sides of the order, so we're finding a middle ground in power for both roles when making top rumble better at beating down tanks while making mid-rumble more vulnerable, particularly when landing against mages. He brought it up to a rider who works on these changes, and he genuinely considered it. Oh, God. Why? Why? Why would you even consider that? Fucking psychopath. The same people that think of this better be the same people that sign my checks in the damn near future because I ain't I ain't having this anymore. I deserve to be on the League Partner Program. I have better ideas than almost everyone else that's on that bloody program. I'm worth this, damn it! Cobra's a scourge upon the earth. Not if you're an ASOL, man. Apparently he's the nicest guy ever until he comes up with that shit. <laughs> Alright, so Magic Resist Base 28. Magic Resist Growth 0.75. Mm-hmm. Overheating bonus damage is now 10 to 50 instead of 20. Oh, wow, they cut that in half. But you get 6% of the target's maximum health 
with 30 AP. That's crazy. But Rec, you're not challenging. Yeah, neither are like 75% of the people in the league partner program. Sue me. Like I said, Cobra's a nice guy. But then, yeah, he arrives at the at the ride office and decides, how am I going to screw up Aurelian Soul today? And that's basically what he came up with. And I hope to God it never goes through. It's a scary thought. All right. You know what? Whoever writes the patch notes needs a solemn beating with a Bible. What is that? What is... What? I swear I have... I, every single time I do the patch notes rundowns, I have such a giant... Gr like... I have such a, like, a bone to pick with this shit. Read the person who writes it. Yes, I'm aware that their name has cat in it. I'm aware. It is 100% a Yumi player. I totally get it. But seriously, I have a bone to pick with all these really bad references. Ugh. Anyway, Electro Harpoon now reduces the target's magic resistance by 10%. 15 when in the danger zone for four... Wait! Stacking at... Wait. Does that stack additively with Void Stuff? Okay. So... Rumble just became a tank shredding menace. Yeah, because it's yeah, it's actually a shred. It's not. It would yeah, it would shred for his ulti. Lucky you can only hit it on one person. Dear lord. You wouldn't even need to put a point in this to get that. Like you get that by default. Fuck. First you shred the MR, then reduce, then remove flat. So you take away 30% and then it's 40%. No, wait, 35? 35, right? From void stuff? So it's 30% you take off and then 35 from that number. It is 40? Okay. Akarix, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. For the remaining MMR, it's, yeah, you don't have a lot of MMR. <laughs> Considering two hits. What do you mean two hits? What? It's 30 and then 30 and then 50 and then 45 and then 40. What do you mean overall? Yeah, it's 15% per. It's not 30% per. Imagine if it was 60%. You wouldn't even need void stuff. You just sneeze on the enemy and they die instantly. It's 15 per, and I don't think you can actually get the cooldown low enough to actually restack it fast enough. Unless you hold out for a really long time. And even then, even if you held out for a long time, I'm sure someone would notice it was coming. So, yeah. While overheated, Rumble gains 50 attack, 50% attack speed. The, I, you know what? Actually, this part on its own makes me nervous. It's actually worth buying Nash's Tooth on fucking Rumble now, and then some, because you'd actually be a dueling fucking psychopath with this thing. I'm forgetting Rumble's DN. DN? What the fuck's a DN? 
Rumble can deal true damage at 104 MR. Dear fucking lord. Oh, wait. Never mind. Captain can take a 10 minute break. He's gone from spoiling WoW to posting garbage in chat. I think he needs a break. <laughs> This is why this is why I don't do patch notes on stream. Because y'all just abuse this free thing way too much. Y'all ain't here to learn, you're here to just be dicks and I'm sick of it. Absolutely sick of it. You're all sicking me. Especially you, Panther. DJ. <clears throat> Thresh. Thresh is the thrive is one of the top supports, so we're tightening the chains on his first first level tools. Ugh, scaling cooldown to flay. Well, there's almost a reason to level it now. Pity no one ever will. So, yeah, makes sense to nerf it, I guess. Your words mean nothing to me. Exactly, because you're a degen. Duh. If you want to reduce Rumble's damage by 50%, you're going to need, you're going to need four MR items. i got a better idea, Akarix. I'm just going to ban Rumble. Fuck all of it. Not even going to fucking deal with it. I'm just going to take him straight out of the fucking game. <laughs> That is a dedicated ban right there. Seriously. Like, it's just not even worth considering that on any level. It is 100% worth just removing like Rumble from the from the gene pool every single time. You just ban Rumble. You just dodge Rumble because who the fuck plays Rumble. Look, when Rumble was at his strongest in, season, in earlier seasons, I played him to a stupidly high win rate in higher ranks. And... It was busted. <laughs> it was fucking busted. <laughs> it was like the easiest thing you could do to get free free rank. <laughs> it was just dumb. <laughs> it was so stupid. And plus, uh, flat magic pen items were even easier to get back then. It's gonna be easy that it was. Again. Imagine that winning a matchup against an MR tank. Fuck, that's just so saddening on its own. Anyway. Vladimir, cool, cute, cute, pfft. let's try that again. Cute cooldown decreased later. As a champion used to rush components for CDR, but can no longer do so with the new mythic item structure. Oh, thanks, Rito. Uh, <laughs> Vlad has been thrown for a loop to compensate by pumping down his cooldowns. So, instead of 9 to 5, it's now 9 to 4. Why are we buffing Vladimir? Because truthfully, there's no CDR items in the game that are worthwhile. <laughs> Not until you actually get to the ability to buy Cosmic Drive, you don't actually feel the usefulness of this. That's like the worst thing about it, is this character absolutely blows like chunks until you actually get to that point. And that's really wrong. On so many levels, it's actually really, really wrong. All right, here we go. This is the one I'm waiting for. Yorick. <laughs> Mistwalker's damage decreased. E initial leap damage decreased. Now deals increased damage over eight attacks. Turrets now prioritize minions over the maiden. <laughs> well, we did it. We woke Yorick up and brought him back to life and right over the balance line. <laughs> to mitigate, we're following up with the 11.6 pass by walking back some of the damage. But we don't want to leave him back in the dirt, so we're adding a second part of his intended changes to help maiden stay alive. Instead of constantly trying to keep her out of harm's way, our premier split pusher can now focus on destroying turrets with his minions of the mist. So Shepherd of Souls has now nerfed the entirety of his minions across the board by up to 10 at late game. Total AD ratio has been nerfed off of it as well. Morning Mist is now, instead of 200, <laughs> I knew the 200% damage was going to get changed instantly. Seriously, it was just such a stupid thing. But yeah, 200% damage on first attack needed to go, and I'm glad it did. Because now you don't get completely, like, rammed by five, by the four minions the moment it hits you. Mark targets take 40% increased damage from the next eight attacks by a Mist Walker. So, you will essentially take more damage over time, which is good. But, dear lord, just dear lord, the burst damage of taking that Mist Walker leap was just... Fuck. Just fuck, dude. <laughs> I got hit by a stray Yorick here. got chugged for 70% of my HP. Like, what the fuck was that? It, it's just dumb. It's just so dumb. 
So I'm glad they walked that part back because that that was the only thing that really needed to change. You could have kept everything else as it was and it probably wouldn't have been too bad to at least like assess on the fly. But to buff it that hard, you just knew it was going to be scary. It's like, all right, Yorick, you had your time in the sun. That was really fun now. Back in the box. Get back in the box. Here's a good Yorick. And Yorick's like, no, fuck you. And chads it back onto the rift. Eulogy of the Isles. So the attack... So the melee and the range minions will actually... It will actually go for the maid... Wait. 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 I thought it was just going to go for the, for his mist walkers, not for the fucking minions too. What? I thought it was just going to go for the mist walkers, not for all of the fucking minions. Oh dear. Well then, yeah, you're gonna need you're gonna need a few people to deal with the Auric. You're gonna need a bigger boat, chat. You're gonna need a bigger boat, chat. Oh dear, Maiden actually being the lowest priority there means this is a split pushing nightmare. Sweet Christ! Hold up, this is what we wanted. Yeah, look, I don't think you've got a choice now. <laughs> You don't even need banner. This thing is a banner on its own. <laughs> like, literal walking banner of death. What the fuck? You can literally just leave this thing in lane and then go fight and it will almost always guarantee a turret. What the fuck? Never want a lesson in wave management? Yorick. Right here. Dear Lord. That's not good. Pro tip, take Ultimate Hunter. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Zach, W... Oh, hang on. W damage increase. Between last season's changes to Jungle Camp Health and Barmy Cinder, Zach's lost a lot of his mid-game clear speed. We're putting the glob back on the job. But I make by slinging him more damage, along with a buff for AP Bruiser builds. Damage amount, flat buffed. The scaling health... Okay, so the scaling maximum health buff is the same, unfortunately. But you get double the amount per AP. You get double the amount from AP. Huh. Uh-huh. The initial chance for that also had Tyrant Prio made an over Yorick if diving beat it. Yeah, but you never were going to get that to work correctly if you were like trying to do it generally. You just wanted the turret anyway. You never wanted to go for the dive. I'm iffy on the Zack change. Like, you know for a fact that, like, the base damage was a necessity just because you would spam it over and over again, but the, the percent damage being the same doesn't really change a lot if you're building tank Zack. But then you look at the percent that gets added per 100 AP, and you actually s start to consider that AP might be a good idea, but then you remember it's Zack. You don't gain any, like, <laughs> you don't gain any, like, decent, uh, any decent sort of, like, mitigation by default. So... AP Zack might be a laugh down the line, but yeah. Doesn't the flat buff make his clear a bit better? I mean, yes and no, because the majority of the damage you were really relying on actually came from the the max health damage component anyway. So this is just means it, just because you spam it doesn't mean it's going to be better for it. It's just eh, it's it's still nice, but it's not perfect, you know. You're still maxing E first, so I mean, yeah. It's okay, but it's not great. If you compare it to everything else that exists in the game, it's still a bit, still a bit howdy going. Maybe we can see them over Hecarudia every fucking game. Nah, won't happen. <clears throat> Until either Stridebreaker, Chem Tank, or Hecarim itself get nerfs, it's just not going to fucking happen. It's just not going to happen. Oh, and Phase Rush too. You have to nerf literally everything that just hard scales into Hecarim's damage versus everything that hard scales into Udia's not dyingness. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Alright. Jungle Chow. Oh, no, they actually... Oh, wait. It's not 500 anymore. Thank fucking God. <laughs> when someone showed me the PTR note for this, I'm like, this is exactly why I don't read PTR notes, because it's going to get nerfed before it comes to life. If you think otherwise, you're fucking insane. So it's not 500 anymore, now it's 300. Not as bad as it could have been. I told you. 
Everyone was freaking out. And I'm like, don't worry. It'll get fucking nerfed before it comes out. Promise. Promise, chat. Promise. Anyway, Diana. Moonsilver Blade damage to non-epic monsters is doubled. Ooh, okay. Moonsilver Blade bonus attack speed by default is just better. I don't know why this is in why this isn't in its own section, but okay. That's fine. We can just leave it there. Mordekaiser, Darkness Rise cap damage against monsters is now 180 at all levels. Ooh. Wow, the early game changes. Wow. Okay, that's really good against early game. Sweet. All right, Zed's passive content for the week on target cooldown applies to enemy champions once every 10 seconds. Does not apply to minions and monsters. You no longer deal increased damage against monsters by default, but the, there's no... The 300 is only capped for the epic monsters at all levels once it gets down to that point, but you will literally start, like, straight executing... You will start straight executing minions always as Zed, is what you're telling me. More changes make me feel good. It definitely feels a lot better going in for some random jungle camps when you can invade like that. That's actually quite helpful. 180 damage by default. It's very nice. Very nice. But yeah, Zed's damage is kind of nice. Anyway, Morgana W, Shadow Bonus Torment against Thing, up by 50%. Not bad. Not bad. Good choice. But yeah, the, the Zed and Darius ones were the ones everyone was the most scared of. It appears that uh, Zed's passive against uh, minions and monsters by default, fucking free 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 can't fuck it up at all now if you're zed and you fuck up csing at all you just have no place in league of legends it's that fucking easy seriously you might as well just play zed if you need a crutch as a mid laner play zed we'll teach you everything you need to know oh but yeah time to learn zed for free lp if you want to learn how to just do the simple things why not did they reduce the PBE numbers for Darius's passive by 200%? Yes, I said. It was 500%. I, I told everyone. I said. It will get fucking nerfed before before release. And everyone's flipping out, going, Ah, fuck it, I got Darius, one second, Dude, Riot's not that stupid. I don't give them a lot of credit, don't get me wrong, but they're not that stupid. There is not a single universe where anyone would have let that go through. Real voice, fuck, get the fuck out of here, Panther. I'll cut you. Femboy record. That's not even femboy. <laughs> not even not even people that like femboys would find that attractive. Fuck up. <laughs> you don't want me to? Do I? Pre-puberty rec. I didn't sound that annoying pre-puberty. Then again, my puberty started at the age of like 10, unfortunately. What if they put 500 to make people feel better about 300, but then intended to use 300 anyway? Then I would say that marketing ploys like that don't belong on the PBE. Seriously. It's never a good idea. Alright. Support Mythics. With Minstone Renewal as the only Mythic that truly fulfilled Enchanter's dreams, they haven't had much of a selection to choose from. They expand their horizons and inventories. We're just adjusting the following items to be picked up based on the situation at hand. Moonstone for more heals and shields. Shirelius for more nibble. But the problem is Moonstone just does everything that you need. That's the problem. Anyway. Shirelius for more nibble feet and aggressive plays. We don't want to overload the game with movement speed, so we're pivoting staff of flowing water to focus on fast zooms to ape. They, they buffed the throughput instead. Are you kidding me? Alright. I'm going to have to spike my drink with alcohol at this rate. Alright. Alright. What the hell is that? A calendar. Why is there a calendar? Oh, it's supposed to be a calculator. Okay. Alright. Starlet Grace Heal is now 60 at all levels, which means it's better early game. Not so much later game. Heal amplification is now each second spent in combat increases your healing and shield power by 4%, stucking five times up to 20%. Okay, that's a fat nerf. I will ride that. That's okay. Mythic powers. Empowers with availability haste. Instead, it increases Starlit Grace's heal by... Wait, what? 
Huh. So you need four items in order to even get to where it was before. And truthfully, that's a nerf because it takes longer to get there. That's okay. I'm okay with this. This nerf is okay. I'm all right with this. I'm okay. I am okay with this nerf so far. Only because this particular part is the difference. The fact that it's 50 down to 20%. I'm okay with that. And you don't get ability haste anymore as well, which is perfect. That's pretty much it. No worries. No fucking worries, right? You've done a damn good job here. All right. Shirelia's Battle Song. Inspire damage empowerment. No longer empowers the next three instances of damage to deal. Oh, okay. So they got rid of that, which is awkward because you kind of. That was kind of the only reason you did it, but okay. Empowering or protecting another allied minion, excluding yourself, grants 25% bonus movement speed. Oh, so that. Wait. Okay. So this made Battle Song kind of useless. That's. Hmm. Okay, this isn't really as aggressive as you would have hoped for. It's just a movement speed granting item now, which, I mean, yeah, in like pro pay settings, this will be useful, but eh. Now, yeah, I mean, giving it five ability haste instead of 3% movement speed is better because like what supports even care for that shit unless they're roaming. And even then, it's not even that great on top of the rest of it. If you're like in other situations, this is pretty crap. Not as, it's like, only people at, like, pro level plus will, like, get the most use out of this particular item. Because any other time, you just wait for the tank to use temp... You just have chem tank. You have chem tank for everything else. Staff of Flowing Water now grants 20 ability haste and 20 to 40 AP... <laughs> Wait, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait, grants 20 ability haste and, and 20 to 40 AP for four seconds. Look, I get that we're trying to steer away from the whole system, like systematic healing thing. Of just like constantly like you know making it a thing but you you haven't nerfed these two items at all i feel like it's just asking for really wonky interaction it's going to make a lot of things fucking weird but literally as an enchanter now right you literally build Moonstar, like Moonstone, Staff of Flowing Water, and Chemtech Putrefy, and every single time you give a heal to someone else, you just give them all this other shit. It's like Ardent Meta on steroids. I don't think that's right at all. Hello, Kyo. How you doing? Welcome back. Hope everything's well. Yes, I know you're Shayna. I remember the name because it was your thing from the stuff. Can't remember where the name was from, but I remember that name. Hope you're doing well. Trying to cast it during the four second window seems so whack. It's not about that though. It's when, you, if you cast it while you're in that four second window, it'll come back faster the next time. Which is wonky in a sense, but that's still free stats. Like that's the thing. It's just free stats. Like imagine Yumi rushes it and sits on a car. That's the thing. If you, if you put it on the right person, it would just, like, it will be so good for that. It throws off timings. Yeah, look, it does throw off timings. But, oh, remember that many of the champs who build staff could keep it up constantly. That's the other problem. Like, you're going to get this. This is literally Ardent Meta on steroids now. Because not only does it apply to people that you would build, like, Ardent Sensor on. This applies to everyone that has an AP ratio. And Ability Haste. Because everyone benefits from Ability Haste. Everyone. Literally. We're actually going to have mages in bot lane more often now because like, this would actually be more useful by default. AP Twitch Yumi return? Maybe. Water flowing noises? Just pour the jug out. Point <laughs> eight second tumble vein? Yeah. It'd be something. I don't think this really changes that whole Moonstaff meta at all. I think it just makes it broader. And that's a problem. Moonstone on its own, taking quite a hit, is good, right? Because it means the healing amounts go down, which is great. That's what you want, right? That's what you want. But Staff of Flowing Water giving this much stat-wise is strange. 
It's really freaking strange. Huh. Anyway. Frozen Heart. Frozen Heart's been getting looked over in the tech item department. Have some heart and more armor away. Add another 10 armor on Frozen Heart. I mean, why not? Seriously. Why the fuck not? Free stuff. So if he presses W, he gives the stats. Like, literally anyone that has, like, some sort of aura that comes off from that just gives free stats to everybody. It's crazy. <clears throat> but, yeah. Frozen Heart's kind of a necessity for that. Problem is, yeah, you still need health to survive in a lot of these particular universes, and that's really not worth it. So, <clears throat> so if you need it against the full AD team, then fucking go crazy. It's still worthwhile. It won't be as good as it ever was when it used to be 100 uh, armor, but, you know, whatever. Chemtech Putrefire. We set out to make Chemtech Putrefire a more sought-after choice for supports by substantially broadening its use cases. First and foremost, we're making it so you have to target an ally to receive the benefits yourself, much like Ardent Sensor and Star for Flowing Water. The ability to apply it to oneself didn't seem to have significant power implications, but it did have odd interactions like with Ravenous Hunter that were not intended. In addition, we're giving the item a slight buff because it's still a bit niche and underperforms compared to other options. Yeah, it's now buffed again. Oh dear. Puff cap toxin ally empowerment. You have to heal or shield another ally champion excluding yourself. So you can't do it to yourself anymore. And will empower both the allies in the next damage to a champion to give 60% grievous wounds. To match Chemtech Putrefire, Ardent Sensor's tooltip has been updated to specify the requirement of another ally. Their functionality is entirely unchanged. Which, again, don't forget, Ardent Sensor used to not do this as a bug when Diana would build it on its own. So that was part of the issue, and now that's been fixed. It was fixed ages ago, but it never worked correctly, like, in that sense. Note-wise. Now, if you build Morel and Omicron over Chemtech, LS will find you and gut you even far. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing now, right? If you're a support and you build Morel and Omicron over Chemtech, dear Lord, dear Lord, there is no help for you. No more grievances. Items that apply grievance wounds will now be called out in chat to notify your team when purchased. Yeah, I'll work with that. Why not? But yeah. I mean... When you compare Chemtech Putrefire and Morella Nomicon, it's like, what, 25 AP difference as opposed to what exactly? A bit of ability haste, some health. If you complete any other GW item before 35 minutes, you should be cut. Yeah, look, it's there's no reason to complete any other like Grievous Wounds item post like until 30 minutes, roughly, yeah. People will stack five of them on a team, thinking it'll give them any increased chance to stop Mundo. Kick. Yeah, you get 20 haste in the mana regen, which is perfect for a support. Hi, Rack, you're on my TV. Hello, TV. Does the TV print money? Alexa, play Despacito. <clears throat> I always wondered, like, if anyone said anything stupid in someone's house, it just procs the shit. But, no. Nah. I always wondered if it, it works better when you're on someone's TV and it just like starts fucking with everyone's shit in the household. Actually, I had this friend I used to talk to on Discord ages ago and <laughs> they had one of those, uh, one of those like Alexa things in the house. And uh, one time they put me on speakers while they were in the kitchen. And I started fucking with it, <laughs> fucking with the stuff at range. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was good times. <laughs> really good times. <sighs> I miss the days when people had unsecured Alexa profiles in their in their places. That is a big ass TV. Nice. Alright. <clears throat> I made a friend unplug his Alexa before he called me. I'd show Alexa turn all the lights off and it would. It was wonderful times. Fucking A. It's awful. But yeah, people get used to that over time when they start fixing that shit. Alright. I only boots of lucidity. Oh, crap. These boots have become very popular in pro play, carrying out other footwear options in the jungle. You want to know why? Because rushing it is the only way to feel useful. Anyway, 
We're slapping a higher price tag since their cost is a contributor to unsustainable jungle meta centered around fast clears and fast ganks at low cost. Well, I've got a really cool idea. Maybe you should just nerf the characters that use them. Except I left because, truthfully, we've had enough of that shit. Alexis, send Rec $250. That's a fucking good idea. All right. Everyone send me $250 right now. Even if your name's not Alexa, send me that money right now. All of it. All right. Hextech Rocket Belt. Night Harvester tends to be purchased more and performs better than rock. What? 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 Did I miss something? Is Ilya remotely powerful right now? Yes. Not below Masters. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Even by one of the items intended always in terms of to assassinate single target. I don't... I don't... Uh... We're bringing it back into style by sharpening the differences between the two items. So, less health... Flat a flat magic wait what flat magic pen upgraded arrow pack I don't understand what why does how does giving six magic pen flat change any am I losing my mind I don't understand this change at all. Do you not realize how strong this is? I mean, look, I that's kind of the problem. I I'm really confused about this. Like Like am I am I playing the wrong game? Like just just hear me out, chat. Hear me out. Just just hear me out, right? Maybe maybe I'm losing my fucking collectives, right? Maybe I'm just losing my mind. But as far as I was aware, Rocket Belt has been better than Night Harvester for a while now. Like, surely, I'm not crazy. I was of the belief that it was better every single time. Since they nerfed it last time. Where you'd only buy Night Harvester if you were ahead, and you had better scaling. But Rocket Belt was better if you needed more upfront damage. So, why are we buffing the item that gives Magic Pen on the passive with more Magic Pen in order to... I don't understand this at all. Akali, Diana, if they all buy Night Harvest. Akali's a busted-ass character. Diana is not even an assassin anymore. And Fizz, I can somewhat understand. But Echo doesn't. Echo is one of the characters that literally, like, purely benefits from Rocket Belt over, over Night Harvester because it's better damage to just go straight for it. And, for, and as far as I'm aware, Fizz doesn't even buy Night Harvester. He buys Ludens, doesn't he? Like, maybe I'm... Like, that's the thing. Like, Diana... Like, Diana doesn't count for shit because, truthfully... Truthfully, there's just no fucking universe where Diana's useful right now. I'm sorry, Diana Mains, I really am, but fuck me, Diana's a horrible character. <laughs> Every other single assassin is better than Diana. And there's not even, like, a useful, like, item that goes with that to make it better. So that's kind of where, like, Diana just continues to struggle. Now, from there, what were the other ones you mentioned? Akali. Akali's just a busted character. It's one of the only assassins that exists that actually has good scalings, which means Night Harvester is good. But, it's also the other issue where you don't actually get good use out of Rocket Belt on Akali. You just don't. That was the other sad thing. However, that's probably the only time difference. As for Fizz, Fizz, I'm not even, like, Fizz obviously has fallen out of, uh, of any sort of enjoyment for anyone these days, right? Like, you don't really see a lot of Fizz. But I was under the impression that Fizz bought Ludens. Or some people even buy Leandries, apparently. I'm just looking at it now. We've got a mix of all three. We've got Leandries, Ludens, and uh, the occasional Night Harvester. And Everfrost. Okay, we've got everything here. Great. 
feel like Fizz is never weak, but that's kind of the problem with Fizz. Fizz is like, he's never weak because he's got the ability to get out of everything, right? But the problem is just that you don't really get a lot of things that kind of go away from that. And you're just like, yeah, well, fuck it, you know? But yeah, my problem, right, is that the people that want to build the Hextech Rocket Belt are going to be even stronger because the magic pen that scales on top of what they have is really fucking good. That's always going to be the case. But I'm really, like, confused as to how on earth we're, we're at a point where you would want to put Night Harvester over Hextech Rocket Belt if you're an assassin that wants that extra gap closed to do more damage. I have no idea where you are locating a Night Harvester Fizz, but the only Night Harvester Fizz I've ever seen is by two people in, in 11.4 that went for it then. That's the only time I've ever seen it recently, and that's on u.gg, right? I don't think that's even often enough to care. I think that's just because, like, Fizz is just a busted character, but as far as I'm aware, it's always been Ludens. Seriously. I had to care I'm like a D3, D4 player, see if he's always build it. I have some bad news for you, Chief. Not really a good area to you know, base it on. Sorry. Anyway. But yeah. Ludens is better on Fizz. Generally. Um, yeah. So I'm really confused about this change. Just purely because we, we look at Fizz. No, Fizz. Fuck. We look at um, characters like Echo and other assassins generally that actually want the magic pen always. Because it's magic pen. It's free magic pen. Why wouldn't you? And then you build void stuff as it is and you're like oh yeah well fuck why not like you know you get all this extra damage but why are we giving it to it for free it's such a strange a thing to just give free magic pen to an item that just because we were trying to get away from that that's the other thing as well like riot were literally adamant about getting away from giving items free flat magic pen as part of their stats because it was way too good this change gives rock about the same magic pen as ludens That's true. Yeah, that's the point. I'm, I'm aware of the, the passive. That's the thing. Like, I'm looking at it, like, as a scaling, like, amount, and it makes it better just purely for that. But, yeah, so does Ludens. They both do. That's why Ludens is, was technically better in a lot of situations, because if you didn't need the extra gap closer, you could just buy Ludens. And that's why Fizz does it, because Fizz is like, well, fuck it. I've got this. Why do I care? <laughs> why do I care? And there, that was kind of the the grievance there so that said people building it get true damage at 73 MR instead of 63 quick question I'm sure someone can answer this relatively quickly how does rumble benefit from this <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to pay my band Rumble every game. Oh, you did the math with Rumble going Rocket Belt. Okay, you're smart. You got me there. You're smart. You're very smart. You're very smart. So that 104 MR true to 104 MR true. Oh, my Lord. Dear Lord. All right. Yeah, that's great. That's just great. All right, Titanic Hydra. Shifting its power away from early game to end low health build. What? What? Oh, it's bone. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, well, rip buying this early game anymore. Rumble, my man, loves just so much he gave his mech a leap too. Yeah, pretty much. What is Gutting Ergot now? Yeah, it feels like it, doesn't it? It's so awkward that, like, Titanic Hydra finally found its usefulness, like, without needing two and a half items to make it useful. But, yeah. I mean, honestly, this is the thing, right? I, I like Titanic Hydra Rush on Urgot because it gave him a useful item early game. I don't like Titanic Hydra on fucking Camille because fuck Camille. So, 
what what I'm trying to say is, Camille ruined it. Camille ruined it for everyone. Fuck you, Camille. You suck. You steel legged bit. Anyway. <clears throat> Fuck Titanic Hydra, all my OBs ate Titanic Hydra. <laughs> Camille Gaming. <laughs> you know what sucks? I like the Camille Main's, like, staff because they were nice to me and they gave me, like, a platform to, like, help coach more people. But fuck, I hate Camille. <laughs> I, I, it sucks that, like, some of my most hated characters have some of the nicest communities ever. I'm so fucking sad about that. Like... Why can't why can't the Olaf and Mordekaiser communities be nice, huh? Why? Why can't they be nice? Why can't they be cool, huh? Camille Maids is not a fucking good community. They were good to me. That's the only part I care about. Sure, it's full of DGens, just like Vane Mains, but that's kind of the point. The staff there are just so nice. They're like, yeah, Wreck, you can totally post up here that you're a coach that's offering free coaching. We will even put you on a pedestal because you're such a cool guy. And then you look at the champion and the community that's involved with it, and you're just like, eh, fuck. <laughs> uh. Purchasing a mythic item from the all items view now collapses the mythic row. Yeah, thanks, man. Been wanting that to happen for a while, considering you're never good. Fixing is where scaling the HUD could break parts of the shop. What? Just supposed to be here anyway various performance improvements and bug fixes now you can lose because of your lane phase rather than the shop yeah don't know about that one chief people are still going to blame the shop there is a safe haven channel that's full of dgens like me nuke it nuke it into the fucking floor all right season 221 on a five chromas I've got to be honest with you, chat. I've got to be honest with you. I don't think I've ever been on a five before. <laughs> it actually sucks. I've never been on a five before because I don't play the game often enough to try. <laughs> I know you haven't been on a five before because you're a DJ, Captain. There's, there's a difference between you and me. I am an upstanding member of the community. You are an asshole. Missing nothing. Yeah, I know that, but like, it's just strange to me. Like, I feel like it would be easy to just get if I actually just could bring myself to play the game without wanting to rip the remainder of my hair out. I see what you're missing on screen. Look, to be fair, I kind of want a Grey Warwick skin just because. But it's just such a... It does feel really lackluster to be on a five, and that's all you get. On a five capsules also contain a random emote or ward skin. Value. Anyway. A RAM balance changes. No one cares. Bug fixes. Leak client. Oh, they fixed the flickering. Cool. Fixing where players will not be able to see specific champion stats on their profile. How about the one where you just can't see your match history on your profile? That would be kind of nice to fix. Don't you think, Rito? Bud? Ugh. <clears throat> Battleland second cast now properly triggers summon Airy. Unstoppable Onslaught now actually knocks up big targets. Fix the bug where Cannon's W. Oh, it's SFX, doesn't matter. Alistair can now generate trample sex against Morgana's Black Shield. Huh. Okay. Fixed the bug where Kindred's Wolf Frenzy would not attack the Rift Scuttler if the ability was cast prior to entering the respective ability area. Trundle's W now properly increases the healing received from Omnivore. Oh no. <laughs> That's not good. Fixed the bug where Jarvan would be able to leave Cataclysm terrain if he activates Stridebreaker and casts the ability simultaneously. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Casting like your R and Stridebreaker at the same time and then just leaving the guy in and then they're going, eh, well fuck. You can you can chill in there for a bit. I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> Fixed Oriana's tooltip that switched the damage shield values of her E command protect. Oh, is that why they buffed it? Yumi can no longer activate Moonstone Renewal when casting W2 chains are planned repeatedly on an out-of-range ally that is in combat. Wow. That's a weird one. Imagine that. 
Fix an issue where Ironspike whips Gordrick as a strike as passive will not remove spell shields from enemy chair. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Now we're on to something. Still invisible minions, you know? Yeah, that's the silly thing. That was a bug. Apparently so. <laughs> Fixed the one where Prowler's Claw Sandswipe passive would still apply damage in its debuff to targets with spell shields. Oh, God. So we fixed one and broke the other, apparently. Yeah, it's sick. Is that a Malzahar thing? It's a spell shields in general thing. It was working, then it broke, and then something else broke as well. Hi, Kiva. I'm enjoying 50 per month. There will be more. I'm going to go sifting through my logs and find more of them. Some of the absolute gems of my coaching career are going to go in there sooner or later. <clears throat> Darkwater Zion is now properly... Don't care. Jace now properly shields Drew damage on his third attack with Kraken... Does anyone actually go Kraken Slayer on Jace? Anyway. When, Kraken when Kayla's Kraken Slayer and uses E, Starfire Spellbite as a third attack, she will now properly deal true damage. Cool. Knight's Vast Sacrifice passive now properly redirects damage from allied pledge champions to the user, even when they're untargetable. Interesting. I gotta stop eating this Audi chocolate. I keep gassing myself. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Battle Academia W. Don't care. Fiora's Grand Chase voice over plate. Don't care. Space Groove Gwen. Full of trippy goodness. Dear Lord. It's fucking trippy, yeah? Dragon Slayer Kale. Oh, yeah. Dragon Slayer Twitch. Oh, yeah. Black Frost Zone. Oh, yeah. Black Frost. But what? Well, that's cool. Pity no one plays Velkos anymore. I'm killing two birds with one stone by deleting that. Oh damn, Repstar's already here, never mind. <clears throat> you should check out Black Vars Velkos' Splash. It's freaking epic. If anyone has a link for it, I will watch it. I will take a freaking look at it. All right, chat. I have a quick question for you. Of course, the moment I said that, the fucking grinding starts again. I hate everything. The Black Frost Velcro skin is based on the rise cinematic where he encounters a, with a watcher creature and kills it because it's trying to steal information. Those bastards. <laughs> Those freaking bastards be stealing my informations. 